Hi, I'm Ken McKibben with Media Merge, and today we're going to take a look at 3D modeling and how this technology can be used in the process of designing sound, video, and lighting systems for worship facilities. So let's get started. Now we're going to look at the difference between 3D and a 2D model. Now this represents a 2D floor plan. This is what we would traditionally get when we're working with an architect. It's usually a little more elaborate than this. But we get something that shows us kind of the basics of uh, the room layout. You can see here it's essentially a square room with a stage in the corner. This is a, a baptistry area. Uh, the way we traditionally would have done this is we'd take both this view and a side elevation view and uh, we kind of put elements into this and work back and forth between the 2D documents to figure out where, where things go. And so let's, let's put in a few things here. I'm going to put in some chairs um, and get a good chair count and a good uh, layout of chairs there. Uh, we're going to come in also and put in the speakers. Now we, we had the uh, system designer has done the loudspeaker model at this point and has told us what model speaker is going in and where it's going. So uh, I, can, I can take the uh, actual speakers and plug them in here and we can see, see where they go. And again, when we look at the old way of doing this, we would have both a, a, a top elevation and, and usually, usually we get lucky and there's a side of ele elevation. Occasionally there's a front elevation. But we can kind of look at, at where that's going to sit in space. And, and let me add a few other elements here as we're talking. I'm going to add uh, some stage elements, some you know drum kit and some mic stands and that sort of thing, some uh, amplifiers there. And this is where it starts to get interesting. On this particular project, we were looking at ways to, to spice up the design, and uh, we were looking for something a little more modern, a little uh, a little bit different. And so we decided to come in and uh, put in some truss, and that's what the truss looks like right there. So we're looking at it uh, at this point. Uh, and again, uh, in the past, this, this sort of thing becomes very difficult to visualize in a 2D environment. Uh, we're talking about a curved truss that has, uh, you know, height, width, and depth. And so, you know, at best we could have guessed in the past at exactly how that was going to fit into the equation. And, uh, and here now you can see what we've done is suspended a screen material between the truss and a pipe. And uh, again, the old school way, we'd be looking at a... a some speakers up here and we could put the truss in, kind of take a guess at how, how wide it would be in the side elevation view. Uh, and we're going to put these elements in one by one and try and work out how, the, how these things are going to interact with each other. And so uh, at this point I could put in some projectors. You see I've, I've stuck some projectors in here. And, uh, and anyway, so in the past this is how we would go about putting together our system. And it took a lot of intuition. And, uh, and honestly, it, it, this, this limited some of the, uh, the design process because there were so many things that we couldn't guarantee without seeing them in place. And so this would have been, you know, in the past, the end result we would end up with to be able to take to the client and say, hey, you know, here's, here's what your facility is going to look like. And as you can imagine, it's pretty difficult to visualize what this is going to look like in a room. And so now, the, the interesting thing, the way that uh, we're able to approach it with this 3D modeling capabilities, uh, we're actually able to come in and say, hey, we want to see what this is going to look like. And so I can put this out in 3D space. And, uh, and now at this point, I can, you know, I can rotate around the room, and uh, we can see it from different angles. Uh, I can come in and put a perspective view and, and actually uh, you know, simulate sitting in a specific seat. And at this point, we're no longer guessing. We're no longer having to use our imaginations as to how this room is going to look. We're actually able to see uh, you know, how these different elements are going to interact with each other and, and, and what our end product is, is going to be like, which you know, is a tremendous asset when we're, when we're dealing with visualizing a project on this scale. And, and of course, once we've completed this 3D model, uh, we're able to go back and, and pull up an actual render. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Of course, once we have this model put together, uh, we can do, do a number of things with it. We can assign textures and colors and different, different materials uh, to the chairs and to the walls and to the stage. Uh, we can sort of get in here and start to stylize what this room is actually going to look like. We can take it a step further than we might have done in the past. Now, this is a really low-resolution version of, of what a render might look like, but this does help give you some idea about how we go about doing this. And so I can build this up uh, this way, and then when I'm done, I can, I can output a render, which is just an image, uh, a regular rasterized image that you can view on your computer that shows what the room would look like. And here we're going to take a look at one of those now.
Alright, this is a render of the uh, project we were just looking at. And in this project, the client came to us with a basic floor plan and not much else. We, we pretty much had an empty room and uh, we were told to come up with a look and a, and a concept. And uh, as we discussed a lot of different things with the client and internally, uh, we came up with this whole idea of this truss. And you can see here, the, uh, there's a truss structure that we saw in the wireframe of the CAD model just a little while ago. And uh, we have three projection screens that are, that are located on the proscenium there. And uh, we were able to, to do some different lighting elements around the room. You can see these, these wall sconces on the side are, are made up of uh, LED type fixtures. This, this is kind of an example of how being able to pre-visualize a facility and to work through some of the different details about how the, the audio and the video and the lighting and all the different technical elements are going to combine with the actual architecture of the room to, to give us a good end result. I'm going to take a look and here, here are some different examples of sort of uh, different lighting schemes, different scenes and possibilities with the uh, current setup. Kind of neat to be able to, to visualize these things. And, and consequently, we were able to also set up some different perspectives. And so here you see a, a, the same room from a different perspective. This would be a different seat in the room uh, kind of off to the side. And so again, you see there, there are several looks included there. Now this is a rendering from another project. and. Uh, this project, uh, this is just to give you an example of, of how the lighting and the video and everything can sort of be, be pre-visualized. Uh, we have two different views here. This, this front view is uh, just taking down the center aisle. And then from a little different view, you can see here uh, from just a little bit off center, this type of visualization allows the client to kind of get a feel for how all the different elements, the speakers and the screens and all this, these different things, might actually uh, fit into a finished room. And I uh, also happen to have a, an image of the final room so that you can kind of see how those two correspond. This is the, the render, the, the concept, and this is the completed facility. So there you go. In this segment, we learned how 3D modeling can be used as a creative tool in the design of sound, video, and lighting systems for churches. With a three-dimensional model, we're no longer just talking about how space is going to look and feel. You get to see an actual image of the facility before it's ever built. This pre-visualization gives you a tremendous amount of freedom and flexibility that wasn't possible in the past. You're able to really explore the creative use of technology to enhance the presentation of your particular worship experience all within the virtual world. If a picture is worth a thousand words, a 3D render has to be worth millions. Everyone on your team can work together on the project with confidence, knowing that they're all on the same page with how the space is going to look and feel. There's no confusion about how different elements fit because everyone is looking at the same picture and seeing the same things. That about does it for this segment. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.